Okay, hello everyone. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and take a look at a particular type of series that we have. And again, we're looking at whether or not this series converges or diverges. It's called the telescoping series. And basically, it's an infinite series whose intermediate terms cancel each other out when written in expanded form. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at one of these telescoping series, and this is what it looks like. Now, before we go ahead and take a look at this part here, which is there, let's go ahead and see how we can approach showing whether or not the telescoping series converges or diverges using the different methods that we know. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this and simplify it so that it comes out to 1 over n squared plus n. And what we can do is we can use a comparison test and we can say that, well, we know that this is going to be greater than 0, which is also going to be less than uh, 1 over n squared. So what that means then is that if we go ahead and take the infinite series, uh, we know that this particular infinite series here is going to converge and therefore we know that this infinite series, which is the simplified form of this, is going to converge. So we can use the comparison test to go ahead and determine that. We can even use the linear comparison test to determine this as well. Notice that this is a rational function in terms of n. And so what I'll do is I'll compare it again with 1 over n squared. And I know that this, is going to this particular infinite series is going to converge. So if I take the limit of a n over b sub n, okay, again that's going to be the b sub n and I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal, then I come out with the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared over n squared plus n, divide everything by n squared, and I know that this is going to be equal to 1. So being that it's going to be equal to 1, which is constant, which is greater than 0, then I, since I knew that this converged, then I know that this is also going to converge. So, we can also go ahead and use the limit comparison test. Now, let's go ahead and see what this looks like when we actually go ahead and expand it out. So, look at what happens. We come out when n is equal to 1. We, this is going to be 1 minus 1 half. When n is equal to 2, it's going to be 1 half minus 1 third. When n is equal to 3, it's going to be 1 third minus 1 fourth, plus plus, and continue on forever. So, notice the reason for the, for the parts uh, that are canceling out. It's because we're going to have the minus one half and the plus one half. This is the minus one third and the plus one third, and then the minus one fourth and the plus one fourth, and so on. So all of those intermediate terms are all just going to cancel out, and what we're left with then is just one over one minus one over n, which of course is the first term, and this is going to be the last term, so long as we take the limit as n approaches infinity. So if we take that limit, of course, this is just going to be equal to one. So we know then that this particular infinite series is going to converge to 1. So this is going to be a particular type of series that we're going to experience and it's going to, just, it's going to be important that we recognize that if we go ahead and expand that or we're going to be able to come up with a telescoping series and even if we don't recognize that it's a telescoping series we can still go ahead and use other means by which we can go ahead and determine whether that particular series, infinite series, is going to converge or diverge. So we'll take a look at a couple of other types of infinite series as well later. Okay, see you later. Bye. Okay, hello everyone. What we're going to take a look at is the process called partial fractions. Now before going ahead and describing to you what partial fractions are, and the process by which we can generate partial fractions. Let's go ahead and just take a look at an example, because if you understand the example, then you get a clear idea of what we're referring to. Let's say, for example, we have a fraction, 1 over n times by n plus 1. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to break that fraction up into two fractions, and notice I'm taking the factors of the denominator and placing it in each one of these two fractions. So this factor n is here as a denominator under a. This factor n plus 1 is going to be under the, fact, under the value of b. Now what I'm going to do then is I'm going to multiply both left and the right hand sides by n times by n plus 1. And notice 
notice that what happens is that I come up with an equation that says 1 is equal to a times it by n plus 1 plus b times it by n. Now, of course, the idea is then is that we want to try to find out what these parameters, capital A and capital B, are. And in order for us to do that, we just go ahead and let, say, for example, n be equal to negative 1. So if n is equal to negative 1, then I come up with 1 is equal to a times 0 minus b. Therefore, b has to be equal to negative 1. If I let n be equal to 0, then I know that 1 is going to be equal to a plus b times 0, and therefore we know that a is equal to 1. So what I can do then is I can say that this fraction, which has been simplified, can now be broken up into this fraction here of 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. So that's what the process of partial fractions does for you. It basically takes what is a simplified fraction and breaks it up into its constituent parts. So the process of partial fractions breaks up a simplified fraction into the sum of its parts, or its partials. The partial fractions with make, which make up this fraction here. So now, what is the point of all of this, though? Well, the point of all of this is I'm hoping that you realize that this right here was actually our telescoping series. So if we came across something that looked like this, one possible outcome of breaking that into its partial fraction form is the telescoping series may actually be generated, and therefore we can tell whether or not the infinite series converges or diverges. Now, of course, we said that if we went ahead and simplified it to 1 over n squared plus n, we can use comparison tests or the limit comparison test to go ahead and solve for that type of series. So, that's what the partial fraction process does, and the, po the possibilities that it gives us, again, to determine whether or not the particular infinite series diverges or converges. Okay? We'll take a look at a couple of examples later. See you then. Bye-bye.